hi ladies at the uh, Serenity House. Um, Ken Hawkins with Thriller Recovered, my wife Megan, uh, uh, and Lou is probably there with her right now, uh, asked me if I would uh, film a short uh, video with you, or for you, um, from John chapter 5 in the Bible. It's about, the, uh, it's about Jesus when he heals a lame man at the Pool of Bethesda. And, uh, and so, well, just listen, and, uh, and, I, and I think you'll understand how you can relate. I can definitely relate. So, um, here's what it says, John chapter 5, it's going to be verses 1 through 9. Uh, if you want to look it up later, I always encourage that. Get in your Bible and, and, and look up whatever you hear anybody tell you, uh, especially when they say it's from the Bible. So, here we go. Um, John chapter 5, verse 1, it says, uh, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the Pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to be well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. So, what's happening here is Jesus comes to this place at the pool of Bethesda, and there's crowds, there's tons of sick people lying around on these mats that they laid on outside this pool, right? And they were told that if they could get into this pool when the water bubbled up, that it would somehow heal them. And uh, and so just picture these crowds of people laying around on these mats, uh, sick, and it says that they were blind, lame, or paralyzed, um, laying on these mats on the porches. And, and, and so I, I just picture that... It, it, and put it into terms in now, like in present time, right? There's all these people that are just laying on these mats and they're, they're just, they're blinded or they're paralyzed by addiction especially, right? It's the biggest one right now um, with what's going on. I mean, people are just dying constantly and they've, they've been suffering an addiction for years and years and years. And so I just picture these people that are just paralyzed on these mats of, of fear and addiction and anxiety and anger and all this stuff. And, and so uh, what's really cool is there was a man that says on, in verse 5, one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Um, and we don't know if that's the guy that's been laying there the longest, but I have a feeling it's pretty close because that's the one Jesus picked and that's just how he works, right? So he picks like the worst one there, somebody who's been laying on this mat for 38 years and immediately I could relate to that because I, I laid on my mat of addiction for 26 years, you know? And so he picks this guy who's been laying on this mat sick for 38 years and when Jesus saw him, and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him a very important question. Do you want to be well? Um, man, what an important question. Even Jesus asked this guy, and, and you think about it, and we think about it, and we're like, well, of course he wanted to be well, right? But, but we don't know that. We don't know how close to the pool of water he is. He's been laying there for 38 years, and he never figured out a way to get in there. And I think, you know, this is in our foundation statement for Really Recovered. We always ask, do you want to be well? Because I think it's so important that you at least have to have that desire. I know we can't figure out how to get better. If we could have, we'd have done it by now. But you know what? We need to at least want to be well. And if we do want to be well, Jesus can work with that. So that's what he asked him. And what's so cool uh, is what happens next. I just picture Jesus walking up to this man. And, and let's, let's put this in perspective a little bit. This man has been laying on this mat for 38 years. He hasn't been able to make it over to this pool of water. Water. He even says, I can't, sir, uh, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. And he couldn't find anybody to pick him up and put him in a pool that was supposedly going to heal him. So I doubt he could find somebody to help him get off that mat and go somewhere to relieve himself or go to the bathroom so or take a shower or clean up. So, so he's been laying on this mat for 
38 years and it's messy and it's nasty and I'm sure he's gone to the bathroom on it and just been laying there. Just think of how gross that mat would be after 38 years of just laying there and not being able to get off of it and Jesus meets him right there. Jesus meets him right there on his mat. I mean, he goes right up to him. He had all those disciples with him. Jesus could have been like, hey, guys, get him up, get him cleaned up and then I'll talk to him but that's not what Jesus does. Jesus meets us right there no matter how messy, how dirty, how nasty it is. He meets us right there on our messy, dirty, nasty mat, right? And so I just picture Jesus bending down and looking at him and saying, do you want to be well right there on his nasty mat? And immediately the guy, uh, the man, he, he focuses on the pool. He turns his attention away from Jesus who's right there and he focuses on the pool and he says, I can't, sir. Uh, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. I just picture at that moment when Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? He immediately turns and starts to look at the pool and focus on what this world says will make him better. And Jesus just bends down and, and, and takes his face probably and turns it towards him and goes, no, 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 no. You don't need what this world says is going to make you better and is going to fix you. You need me. Um, and so right after that, Jesus tells him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. And immediately, it says instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. So I wanted to share that with you. It was, it was huge. This was, uh, this was the first video I ever filmed that was straight out of the Bible, that was teaching out of the Bible, that, that God had given me this realization. Um, and I know it's Megan's, one of Megan's favorites. She always talks about it all the time, but it's so important. I know that we can all relate to that. I know you've been laying on some mats um, and you feel like you're paralyzed and you can't get off of them. And, and they got, and they are, they're nasty with things that we've done and, and things that have happened to us. And, and there's nasty, dirty stuff on those mats. And, and we feel like somehow we have to figure out how to clean them up and, and fix it or whatever before Jesus would even be willing to, you know, to, to have anything to do with us. But that's not what's, that's not what it is. Jesus meets us right there. Um, and, and he wants us to stop focusing on things that this world is telling us is going to make us better. And if we'll just surrender our lives to him and turn our complete focus and attention to Jesus, he will tell you to stand up pick up your mat and walk. He will heal you. I promise you, um, it happened for me. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, really recovered.